Today we're going to talk about how angels help us. And again, they help us in many ways, but the first thing we have to do is let go of our human free will. No, nope, human free will is not a movie about a friendship between a whale and a boy. <laughs> it is not free willy, so just to clear that one up. <laughs> human free will is defined by Merriam-Webster Dictionary as the ability to choose how to act or the ability to make choices that are not controlled by fate or voluntary choice or decision. For example, quote, I do this on my own free will, quote, you know, um, just, you know, like, or I have the human free will to speak what I would, you know, want, something like that. You know, it's the freedom that humans have to make choices that are not determined by prior causes or by divine intervention. So just to do a briefing on the human free will, because we did a human free will on the last podcast. So if you need more information on human free will, you can see a podcast, uh, I believe it's a series part two, angel series part two. Um, angels help us with everything and anything in our lives. You can call on them for anything. The simplest thing that you feel might not mean nothing means everything when it, you call on an angel because they, you are showing them that you notice that they're there and their purpose is to help us with everything and anything in our lives. For example, Archangel Michael is known to be the technology guru. I call upon them whenever I have a problem with any electronics, especially my computer. Like, um, he's come to my rescue so many times when my computer was freezing or moving slow or something was just paused for no reason at all. And I'd be like, Archangel Michael, please make this work right for me so I can do what I need to do today and get finished my, my you know, tasks for the day. And bam, the next thing I know, my computer's working good and he is an awesome, awesome archangel for technology and strength and courage and many other things. So don't hesitate to call on angels for anything or everything. Even you might think it's stupid or simple. They do not. They never look at it that way. Um, the angels one time, they warned me to back up my files onto an external hard drive. Thank God I listened. Because a week or two later, my computer crashed, and I have to ha had to have it formatted. If I didn't follow the intuitive guidance from the angels that I received, I have w would have lost all my images, all my work documents, and so much more. So always follow your intuition, because these this is the angels sending you messages. Another example, I'm on my way to my office uh, the other day, and... Something told me to go take the back roads, but I didn't listen. As soon as I got onto the highway, which takes me directly to my office, and a very like in, in a flash, like I can get here in no time, and it was all backed up all the way to the entrance to, that I got on till the exit I got off. I was like, Angels, I'm sorry I didn't listen. I knew I should have listened to you. I will follow your guidance from now on you know, from here forward. And you know what? Every time I'm leaving for work, I now I ask the angels which way I should take, and they've never failed me yet. <laughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. Um, for example, uh, another example, like when someone else is not feeling well, um, you know, you can call on the angels to go help them. And I have another example for that. I'll never forget it. When my son, who, who now resides in San Francisco, California, and I live in New Jersey. So he was so sick with the flu. He had just moved out there. I felt so bad that I could not help him. Um, and, and yes, he's in his 20s, but still, a mom is never finished being a mom. You know what I mean? So he was, you know, when I talked to him on the phone briefly and he was so sick with nausea and vomiting so after we hung up i called upon archangel Raphael, who was the healing angel and i asked him to go to my son and heal him taking away the harsh symptoms that he was experiencing just one hour later my son calls me and says my symptoms stopped and he was able to eat soup and keep it down without vomiting I thank the Archangels and Archangel Raphael for going to my son and helping him since I could not be there myself. 
you know, and sometimes when you call on them, tell them, say from, you know, talk to, you know, your creator or your God and say, you know, from a, from a parent, a par uh, yeah, I can't say the word, a parental point of view, because the creator knows how this feels because we are all the children of the creator. So talk to them from a parental point of view and, um, and they understand. Angels guide us and help us in any way possible. Again, we must release our human free will, which is our own need to control our life. Okay, and if we invite the angels in, they can take us to our true purpose in life, which can be for one person or can be for millions of people. So, you know, your purpose could be, in, you know, for a, a, a special needs uh, child uh, even if it's just for that one person, it does not mean that somebody else that is helping 5,000 people or a million people is any different than you. Okay, we're all the same. We're all made unique because we're here to help each other. Just think, if we all had the same talents, same weaknesses, same strengths, how boring would this world be? How could we help each other if we all knew the same exact thing? It's like somebody being good at printing and somebody being good at, uh, you know, marketing, you know? So we need a printer to do marketing, you know? We need to print flyers and business cards and marketing, printed marketing materials, brochures to be able to market our business. So that's why people work together and that's how it works. You know, so st don't stop comparing yourself to other people. You know, don't do that because when we compare ourselves to other people, we, we tend to bring ourselves down lower than that person that may be more successful to us right now. But, you know, the point is, is that we're here to help each other because your strengths and talents may not be that other person's strengths and talents. So you have to find your talents, your strengths, and work on them, you know, and, and do something with them because that's the purpose that you have here. Focusing on your weaknesses is not going to bring anything good to you. We have to be positive. We have to think positive what we think we are, okay? Our thoughts are us. So when... You know, when we think, oh, I'm never going to make any money compared to I am successful and prosperous. And you talk like you're in a present tense. It's like an affirmation. And if you keep saying it every single day, I guarantee your life will change. And that's with anything. It just doesn't have to be with finances. Instead of feeling depressed and saying, oh, I'm so depressed. I hate my life. And I've been there. Okay. There's one time I wanted to end my life. Uh, but I'm not going to go into that right now. I'll go to that another series and life camp series. But, you know, I, I didn't want to live. I didn't care anymore. But the thing that kept me going was my children. And I thank God every day for my children because they are my inspiration and my world. So how do we call upon the angels? It's simple. Just use your telepathic cell phone, which are your thoughts, by thinking angels please come to me now that's all you have to say and you don't even have to speak it out loud you can think it angels and archangels come to our assistance the moment we call on them we don't need to say a formal invitation or invocation ritual you don't even need to verbalize your call out loud just the thought of angels just the thought angels is enough okay so you can think angels please help me you don't have to give up your human free will or say that you're giving up your human free will because as soon as you call them, they know that. It's automatic. So if you request, if you request angelic assistance and it's, it's sincere from the heart, the angels will appear in response to your call, often before you even finish calling on them. You can say something as simple as something uh, like this. Angels, please help me in my life. And again, you don't have to verbalize it. You don't have to speak it out loud. You can just say it or, or think it. Or you could say or think or say, angels, I give you permission to guide me in my life. Or angels, I give up my human free will. You know, please guide me. 
you could say this again out loud, or you can just think it, and the angels will hear you. They connect with us telepathically, which is through our thoughts. Be sure to truly feel the request within your heart, okay? Angels are always beside us, waiting for us to call on them and give them permission to guide us to our true life's purpose on this earth. They are just a few words or thoughts away, waiting for us to knock so the Creator can open the door and I can allow us in. So, to end this podcast, I'd like to speak a little um, affirmation for everybody to remember. Okay? So, instead of thinking how bad your life is, I want you to say to yourself every morning and every night, I want you to say, I live a perfect life. That's it. That's all you have to say. I lived a, I live a perfect life. Or, let me see something, if you don't feel comfortable saying that, you can say, um, I live a healthy and prosperous life. So give it a try. And you don't have to use those exact words. Come up with something that you feel comfortable that pertains to what's going on in your life right now. Okay, and again, you can visit our website and there's uh, all kinds of uh, worksheets and things like that that you can use as well. And you can see that on the media page. This is Lisa Moria and I will talk to you guys the next podcast. Namaste.